the strings of uh, et et and 2b are just uh, you're doing good uh, today uh, i'll be showing you uh, how to to build a two input or gate uh, using a 7232 ic okay so um we, we all know uh, when you go to the lab uh, you'll be given your ic and um, and each ic got a specific code okay like for instance you can see here the 440140 40, 40, 11 40 70 and 4081 so for each um in this uh in this example i'm using the 7432 okay so this is part of uh practical number one on digital system so this is the very first part of it which is the odd gate and we are expected to build it and uh, implement the and com complete the truth table based on the experiment so the very first thing for you to know is to get the pin configuration and the pin configuration is gotten usually it's gotten you can get it from the internet or anywhere like for instance this is an example of what i'm i will use to explain to you guys uh, i actually got this from texas instrument so you just need to type the name of the ic you just need to type the name of the ic this is an example of an ic okay so if you look carefully on top of the ic there's a code there okay you might not be able to see it now but there's a code there so you type the code you type the code on the internet and it's going to bring up the pin configuration or the pinout configuration so this is what i got uh, when i typed uh, the code that i was given on on the internet this uh a quad uh, two input or gate okay and the 7432 it's ten sn5474 ls32 okay it's usually just called a 7432 so now the way this uh, is configured it is such that like you can see there is a small um there's a small there's a small opening here there is a small opening here i don't know if you guys can see there's a small opening here so usually you start counting from this one like this is pin one pin two pin three pin four pin five pin six pin seven pin eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen all right so this is just uh, an example which i drew here okay so i'm just going to put it like this okay so now in this uh, ic we got two we got one two three four that's why it's called a quad input because there are four um all gate okay like one two three four of them then the very first uh input for this example is one and the second is two so both one and two are the input three is the output then four and five are the input of the second or gate and six is the output seven is the ground okay eight is the output of the third or gate and nine and ten are the input of that third or gate then the last or gate we have um 11 is the output of the fourth or gate 12 and 13 are the input of the fourth or gate then uh that's 12 and 13 then 14 pin 14 is the vcc it's where you power up your ic okay so based on this i will try to show you uh, how this has been configured okay this is one of the or gate this is one of the or gate so we have our input x and y okay so on the input you need to connect you need to connect what your switch okay in this case i'm just using the push button all right you can still use a switch still going to work then you have 
an LED which is in, which is connected in series with uh, a resistor, a 10 ohm resistor. Then also we also have an LED which is connected in series with a 10 ohm resistor. Then we have our switch which is connected to uh, uh, to a 5 volt and a 5 volt also. Then you must note the uh, the voltage. Uh, there's a maximum voltage for each IC, so that it's also shown. It's also shown on or uh, on Texas uh, instrument there on the pinout configuration. You will see the maximum input that the IC can withstand. Then we have uh, another. This is like. Um, uh, this is usually a, a resistor, another resistor which is connected, okay? It's a shunt resistor connected to the ground. The resistor should be greater than 10, 10 K. Both of them for each input should be greater than 10 K. Then, uh, coming to our circuit on breadboard, okay? This is uh, our... IC 7432. So this pin, the very first pin, we're using the very first pin, pin 1 and pin 2, as you can see here, pin 1 and pin 2. Then coming here, we have our pin 1 here, okay? Then we also have our pin 2. Pin 2 is here, okay? Pin 1 and pin 2. Then pin 3 is the output. That's where my LED is connected and in series with the resistor the resistor now goes to the ground then we have our pin 7 which is connected to the ground then we have our pin 14 which is here is our pin 14 you can see it's connected to uh, vcc to 5 volt okay then we have our two inputs our two input okay one is connected this is the very first input with this uh with this blue cable is it the green cable okay the green cable takes it to this uh, uh led okay then the second input takes it to this led the very first input takes it to this LED. The second input takes it to this LED. Then the various LED now takes it with this 10 ohm resistor to the ground. There is also one thing you must also understand. Uh, this breadboard is actually a new breadboard, but I'm surprised um, something happened. It's like it's from a manufacturer. The manufacturer's fault because power doesn't cross this point so i had to breach this okay just to make it flow from this part to this part same to uh the same applies to this side okay i just breached them because i noticed power wasn't running from this side okay to this side that is it was there was a short circuit here okay there was an open circuit here so i just short circuited the the, the rails then coming back to our um breadboard to our circuit so now we need to now connect our switches so we take our switch or our push button still from the input like you can see the two these two um white cables okay these two white cables are taken from pin one and pin two then we then connected to the input or the first terminal of the push button. Remember, this is a push button, meaning uh, it's first of as the the initial state is is an open circuit. Okay, it's open circuit. So when you press it, uh, it, it 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 short circuits. Okay, so this one is also open circuit. If you press it, it uh, short circuit. Now the other output from here. Remember, it depends on the kind of switch you're using. So for this one, this one works with this other one. Then this other one works with this one. This one and this one are short circuit. The one which are directly connected. They are short circuit. But the one which are um, diagonally connected, like from here to here, they are open circuit. So when you press it, it becomes short circuit. Then it takes it to our VCC.
or our five volt so now we're done with that part so uh there is one thing when you connect this that is what we call you need a, a shunt resistor which is going to um initially when you connect it like this and you power it up you find out that this output uh, the output pin 3 is actually coming on without you applying or giving in an input voltage or an input signal for pin 1, input 1 and input 2. So to eliminate that, you need to connect um, a resistor, okay? You need to take resistor from pin 1 and pin 2 uh, to the ground and the resistors must be greater than 10K. So these are my two resistors, okay? So my two resistors connected to the ground. So I actually just um, like give uh, both rails, both uh, the, the, the ground and the live, both sides with this. Um, uh, that's, I actually gave this to um, both rails, uh, the ground and the live, okay? And I think that's pretty all about the, the, the explanation. So I'm just going to show you how it works. Then we'll fill up the tooth table. So I'm using um, I'm using a power supply, uh, a regulated power supply here. So in this power supply, we have our on button. Then we have our channel one and channel two. So this is our channel one. This is the ground. In this case, we're not using the ground. This is our channel one, which runs from zero to thirty-two. Okay, and it's controlled by um. Um, it's controlled by a, a potentiometer, meaning you can increase it and reduce, okay? Both channel 1 and 2, and it runs from 0 to 32 volts, and the 3, uh, 3 amp. Then, uh, this is channel 1 and channel 2. Then you see the third channel, it's, it's a hardwire 5 volt, okay? It's a 5 volt. It gives us a 5 volt and a 5 amp, okay? So now, I'm using, supplying my circuit with a 5 amp or a 5 volt uh, supply okay so there is no need putting it here since i know this part the third channel is going to give me you can see it's written there channel one channel two and channel three so i used my channel three because it's written down here you see it's a 5 volt so i'm just going to power it up okay okay so we're using this channel then now, um, this is my cables connected to the power supply, a positive and a negative. So now, what I'm going to do now is you need to put it on. The way it's on, but now you need to give it, allow it the signal to come out from the power supply. So to do that, to give it, the, to enable the voltage output, you need to press, you need to press this, okay? So initially, Initially, we have our open circuit and our open circuit, okay? Nothing is coming in, like we have a zero signal, a zero signal, zero input, zero input, okay? So immediately you apply um, in each, either of them, okay? If you give either of them a voltage, then you should get a corresponding output based on this LED. So this is our two input LED and this is our output LED. So now, initially, nothing is coming in. So we can see our output is it's a zero. So we just write a zero here. Okay. That's our first, uh, that's our first uh, uh, two table values. Okay. Zero, 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 and uh, zero, or oh, zero, it's a zero. Then if each, we know from our theory that each, uh, for each input, if the, any of the input is high, the output must be high. So let's start with the very first input, okay? Let's start with this input. You see, one input is high, the other put input is high, okay? So X is high, um, X is uh, low, Y is high, then we have our Z which is high. So we know we, we have a one here, okay? Then uh, we take the other one, either of them, this one is high, we have uh, our output is high, so put a one. Then now both input are high, so for both input, we have to push down both of the push buttons to give them 
a high value so i'm just going to push down both input at once okay then i'm expecting to have a uh, an output okay all right guys so it's very simple you just need to um uh, make yourself um comfortable with the circuits how to uh, build them on breadboard uh, how to connect your power supply know the pin configuration so that's the most important thing so for the AND gate it works pretty the same you can also get a quad core uh, to input AND gate it's strange the configuration uh, most of the time might be the same but it's important that you check the configurations then for our NAN gate you can actually use an AND gate and an inverter okay you can use an AND gate and an inverter to implement your NAN gate so guys uh, i will see you in the next um, practical session i believe you are able to uh, you'll be able to carry on with this carry on with this practical when you get to the lab i uh, think before the end of this month okay that would be communicated by um, dr frank and also uh, if there are any questions regarding this practical um feel free to feel free to contact me okay uh, there's a whatsapp group which is created for you guys so in case you have any challenges don't hesitate to send us an email or send us uh, a message on whatsapp all right thank you bye